All right, everybody, we're going to start the vendor booth. So please get ready. We have uh, Jeff Simpson win the house again. So Jeff Simpson is, um, there you go, Jeff. You're in the house. Everybody's probably out there eating and enjoying things. And, and now it is, um, it is vendor booth time. So what I'm going to do, Jeff, is I'm going to give you the reins. Uh, I do have that video pull, uh, queued up. And I'm going to let okay. you go, brother. I'm going to get out of your way. All right. So, hey, folks. Nice to be here at the Eastern Section. You all know last year I uh, couldn't make it. Was that the year? Wait a minute. I didn't make it, did I? What was this? I don't know. There was a vent. I couldn't make it. There was uh, or was that one? It was something I couldn't make. It was because my spine fused. Uh, anyways, hey, I'm here. Having a blast today. It's hungry as heck, so uh, we'll keep this to a quick 15 minutes, and then it's time to cook some lunch. Uh, what we want to do today is go over some UL field evaluation and inspection topics, okay? And some of this we'll cover a little bit tomorrow in the UL uh, slash AHJ inspector meeting. Uh, you're welcome to attend. If you don't have uh, an invite for that, shoot me an email. There should be a business card at the last slide of this presentation with contact information so that you can register. I'd love to see you there. It's going to be fun, and uh, I think we're going to give out a few prizes. We'll do some. Uh, we have some digital Home Depot gift cards, and I think we're doing an Apple Watch or something. So uh, definitely welcome to attend if nothing else. Uh, you know, come along because it's going to be fun. Now, what I want to do, Tom, advance that slide, and let's talk about what we're going to talk about. We got to first tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Isn't that how it goes? Yep. Contents, okay? We want to talk about, well, I'm going to, we're going to do a three-minute field evaluation video, okay? Uh, we're going to cover some remote inspection stuff, okay? Interesting things about remote inspections. I, I think everybody is probably interested in that because uh, here we are, COVID-19, you know, uh, field labeling process and requirements and uh, some inspection topics, maybe some plant oil extraction equipment, uh, horticultural stuff. Uh, some ULIEI resources that are coming, and um, we also want to talk about the 2020 NEC code correlation on UL product IQ, which replaces UL product spec, which replaced the UL white book. Okay, so that being said, let's go to the next slide, which is going to tell Tom that it's time to fire up the video for three minutes, and then we'll cover some more stuff after that. Game on. Oh, do we have sound? Okay. Electrical Good. equipment as long operates as they on trust. I hear something now. We help evaluate its safety. At UL, we've been working for a safer world since 1894. With over 14,000 employees globally, we apply science and objective authority to help mitigate risk and build trust through safety, security, and sustainability. That's why our field evaluation service is a customizable, highly preferred program. UL is fully accredited for delivering field evaluations. In fact, over 88% of code authorities trust and accept the UL mark, as well as prefer working with us. A UL field evaluation label identifies a product that has been evaluated for electrical safety by UL. Our field evaluation engineers inspect a vast array of products. From large-scale projects, such as equipment used in professional football stadiums, the Times Square New Year's Eve ball, and hazardous locations, to industrial equipment, energy storage systems, and control panels, to equipment used in local restaurants and even family-owned businesses. Bringing a workplace to life operationally requires many moving parts and heavy responsibility for the well-being of workers and everyday people. So we partner closely with our customers to understand their custom evaluation needs and timelines. Our fully staffed technical experts offer quick turnarounds to help reduce downtime. We service customers and work sites globally and are in close communication with local authorities and code inspectors for guidance. We evaluate certified products that were modified, imported and uncertified products, as well as fully customized products. If a product is out of compliance, we provide you with timely, detailed reports citing each issue and the reference to the applicable standard. 
We offer custom evaluations, affordable fee structures, code authority confidence, global expertise, and help with market acceptance. At UL, our field evaluation engineers are truly global industry experts. That's because our engineers are tenured UL employees that carry with them extensive experience, which allows us to service complex to traditional engineering projects. It's one of the strong reasons why UL evaluations are trusted and preferred by over 88% of code authorities. Additionally, we take pride in understanding your needs as we partner with our customers from start to finish to efficiently complete evaluations, ensuring excellence and a customer experience that exceeds expectations. Evaluating equipment safety and compliance is based on trust. UL helps provide the confidence you require. Ready for a trusted expert field evaluation? Learn more or start a quote today at ul.com. All right, so everybody heard that, hopefully. I didn't hear it so well. I wonder if I just have an issue with my computer. Yeah, you're fine. Everybody had a really good audio on that one. Okay, great. All right, so let's jump into slide four. I want to talk about, about remote inspections, okay? There it is. Uh, remote inspections. We're now we're, we're talking uh, UL inspections here, okay? Uh, began in 2020 due to uh, the pandemic, obviously. And uh, a remote inspection, I mean, it, it follows the same steps in our in-person field evaluations, okay? Uh, customizable, flexible to work with, the manufacturer and equipment, et cetera. And um, we established some training programs for field engineers and customers. Remote inspections will continue as an option for our customers in the future, okay? Uh, let's go to next slide on field evaluations. Field evaluations, okay, ensure they, obviously we know what they do. They ensure products and their installations meet the applicable standards and safety requirements. And, you know, it gives the authority of jurisdiction a, a certain level of comfort when uh, trying to look at uh, products that might or may not be listed or maybe they were um, modified uh, since they were originally listed. Uh, and it meets all the requirements for the NFPA, National Electrical Code, and satisfies OSHA's requirements in the workplace. Next slide. Our field evaluation services. Uh, we have a we have a great FE team. Uh, Jimmy Wong's on it, and a few other people. Uh, good folks, and it gives us solutions for non-certified products, stuff that was required to be certified by the electrical code or or other codes, but maybe it was never certified to begin with. Uh, there's always unique, custom, one-of-a-kind products that. Um, uh, that are special for a specific location or job that we have to do a field evaluation on. Uh, there's also limited production volumes. Think about this. When, when folks uh, create something and it's just for a specific location or a few different locations or whatever else, and it's not going to be well, – sometimes the manufacturers want to make something and not necessarily list every single one of them. They might just have it a custom installation for one or two jobs and certifying the product is going to be significantly costlier to get to end up with a listed product than field evaluating it out in the field for a one-time situation. Uh, field modified UL listed products, we see that all the time. Somebody drills holes and taps bus bars and a panel board or something like that. Uh, you got to get a field evaluation. There's a lot of things to consider when something is modified in the field in order to meet the uh, criteria for a specific installation. And optional advisory training services, you know, we're here uh, and our FE team is here to uh, provide those kind of services for you folks. So always reach out to us if you need something. And let's go to the next slide, Tom. Hey, you all open for business, folks, and we are conducting field evaluations during the pandemic, okay? So you can always go to UL, www.ul.com forward slash field. Or you can call the number, 877-854-3577, and hit number two, okay, on the keypad to get more information on that. You'll get straight into the ULFE team. A lot of good guys over there and gals, and uh, they provide a terrific service that we, that we stand behind. Next slide. Okay, so here 
this is interesting, okay? UL has developed a standard, uh, a safety standard and a certification program for plant oil extraction machines and systems, okay? We're likely to see a lot of this when we're dealing with horticultural uh, cannabis, other things like that. They want to extract, extract the oil from certain products, and a lot of times they have to use uh, chemicals and other things that are flammable, and um, it's really critical that you have programs like what we have established to ensure that the products used for these type of situations are safe. Um, we recently published that uh, UL uh, 1389, it's a Canadian and, a, and an American standard, a standard for safety for plant oil extraction equipment, okay, for installation and use in both ordinary, unclassified, as well as hazardous locations, okay, depending on how they're determined to be. UL 1398 is, uh, will be specifically referenced in the 2021 editions of the Fire Code as well as uh, NFPA 1. And UL 1389 addresses fire, okay, electric shock, injury to persons, explosion risks as associated with extraction equipment installed in processing facilities. And the standard covers several different things. Go ahead and click there, Tom, and let's see what we got. A bunch of bullet points should pop up here. This standard is going to cover the preparation equipment used for trimming, de-seeding, drying, curing, or other activities in order to prepare the plant material for extraction. It's also going to cover extractors involving flammable or non-flammable materials. The extraction booth, sometimes this is done in a booth, okay, including modified fruit container pods, and clothes or extraction equipment. Also, the post after processing, the post processing equipment. This is all covered in the standard. Plant oil extraction or utilization equipment that utilizes plant oil subsequent to the overall extraction process, such as dispensing machines and assembling machines. Interesting. And you all certifies this type of stuff under several product categories and can also field evaluate this equipment. Okay, that's a really good uh, tool to have in your back pocket whenever you're dealing with some of the stuff in the field because it's coming across as new stuff here and a lot of folks don't know about it. So for more information on that and those product categories, check out the links. Okay, you're going to go to ul, uh, www.ul.com forward slash IAEI. All right, there's a lot of really cool links on this landing page. Okay, uh, a lot of really good uh, brochures and, and, and things that you're going to need in order to understand what's going on out there from a UL's perspective. Or you can just go to codeauthorities.ul.com forward slash oil extraction dash machines. Okay, next slide, Tom. Hey, coming soon, guys and gals, new inspection resources on our Code Authorities webpage, www.ul.com forward slash Code Authorities. All right? It's not there yet, but it's coming. Okay? We're going to have some really great stuff. Topics include energy storage equipment, cannabis production equipment, the installation code search on UL Product IQ. That's critical. Commercial cooking hoods and equipment, reconditioning equipment, HVAC, all kinds of stuff. That's all going to be updated shortly on our uh, ul.com forward slash code authorities, which provides you all kinds of things that you would need from a code authority perspective. Next slide. Okay, so this is cool. The uh, 2020 NEC, we have a code correlation database, and it's now available on our UL Product IQ platform. Okay, so you go to ul.com. Uh, UL Product IQ. I'm going to show you how to, to do this in the next few slides. And you need to register as a code authority and you'll get full access. Uh, what we do as part of this, and, and we'll go through a couple examples, is we make it so that if, if you're looking at something in the code book and you're like, what does this mean? It just says it's something that has to be listed. Now, now what? Uh, well, you can type in that code section on an installation code search feature in UL Product IQ. And then you can hit search and you can see what UL says about it and expands the language in order for you to find out what something has to be, how it's got to be labeled, how is it supposed to be used, things like that. Okay. So let's go through a couple of examples. Next slide, Tom, we're going to show the folks how to register. Okay. You would just go to UL Product IQ. All right. You could register for free. 
real simple. Okay. Next slide. And then once you're registered, okay, and, and I'll talk to, I'll talk more about the the unique individual features if you register as a code authority tomorrow. If you attend our UL slash inspector meeting tomorrow evening from six to eight p.m. and if and if you don't know how to do that, shoot me an email and I'll include you on the link so that you can register. And uh, there'll be my contact information on the last slide here of today's presentation. But uh, once you're registered. You can go to the main screen there and type in the words installation code. Actually, before you even get that far, you can almost get to install, and it'll automatically populate, and you can click on installation code search. Okay? And let's go to the next slide, Tom. This is what it'll look like, okay, when you get to that next point. Installation code search. You can click there. And just select your code. You don't have to type anything in. Just click there. And Tom, let's see what's on the next slide. This is what you'll see. Right there. Okay. You can select National Electrical Code. All right. Next slide. You have to select the year of the code book. A lot of states are still on other codes, 2017, 2014. Uh, if you're on the 2020, good for you. That's terrific. But some folks are on the uh, 2017 or, or whatever else, and, and you got to type in the code year that applies to what you're doing. Okay, so in this case, we're going to type in 2020. And let's say we want to talk about rapid shutdown equipment. Go ahead to the next slide, Tom. Maybe you want to talk about rapid shutdown and you want to enter the code section 690.12. Okay. Then you can select from all the things that populate. Which code section are you in? Are you in 690.12C, D, B21? What is it? Depending on what code section you're in and what you're trying to figure out, maybe if it's a product and are they available, are, are, is there more information, you can select one of these sections and then go to the next slide and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So we selected 690.12C. You can see it on the left-hand side of the screen under the year and then the section, things like that. And look what it populates with. It has two results, QIJS, the guide info for QIJS or the QIJW. Both of these are relative to rapid shutdown, okay? And you can see what it says underneath that product description, photovoltaic rapid shutdown systems to the right of that red arrow, okay? And then go to the next slide, Tom. Once you click there, there's a couple things that you can choose from. You can click to view UL certified products, the arrow on the left there, the red arrow, or you can click to see if there's any additional information that UL has published that might be helpful for you under the related information tab with the red arrow on the right. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and this is gonna simulate us clicking the view the UL certified products. So now what you would see is all of the different folks, the company names of products that fall within that category that 690.12 is speaking about. Okay, We've, and now this is products that are listed by UL. This does not include anything else. This is all UL. It doesn't include any other nationally recognized testing labs. They all have their own way of looking up products that they have certified. But this is how you would look up something to see if UL has certified products in order with this category. So in this case, maybe we can click on QIJS or whatever else and look at SMA's uh, products that comply with 690.12 or pick somebody else, Outback Power Technologies, Tygo Energy, uh, any of these things, okay? Now that's if we're looking at uh, the actual uh, UL certified products. Now the next slide, Tom, is gonna talk about if you were to click the related information tab all right and that's where you would find all these links to alternative energy application guides uh, why the functional safety matters in renewable energy applications energy storage system designs uh, white papers and you know other things like that that ul has said hey we need to put out some further information on and um and those are great links i mean if we were looking at uh panel boards instead of photovoltaic systems, we'd be under a different product category. And then you'd be able to click related information and you'd be able to find 
data and documentation on, hey, what happens if somebody taps a bus bar in a panel bar? Do I need an evaluation? Is it okay? Is it allowed? Uh, things like that. There's a lot of different publications that we put out there that provide further information to uh, code authorities and engineers and, and installers. And it's all under these related information tabs whenever you get into the UL guide information. Okay, this is really useful to, to folks that are out there in the field and doing inspections and uh, installation where, where maybe the, the code just says something as basic as, hey, this product or that product must be listed. Well, guess what? What does it mean if it's got to be listed? How is it supposed to be labeled? How will I know? Is it going to be listed and marked on the package that it comes in? Is it going to be listed and marked on the actual product itself? I'm looking at something right now in the field. I don't see a listing mark. Could it be that that mark could be somewhere else besides the product? Well, guess what? You're going to find all of that information when you get into the UL guide info in uh, UL Product IQ. This is a really helpful tool, and it's critical, I think, for the inspection community to understand that this is out there for them. Next slide, Tom. And we're almost done, folks. Hang in there. There you go. Join me. Oh, let's see. I got There's my email, okay? If you want to come tomorrow and listen to our UL slash inspector meeting, and you're an inspector, you're an authority having jurisdiction, an AHJ, okay, please shoot me an email. I will instantly send you a link so that you can log in tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to cover some things extensively as well as open it up for Q&A. A lot of folks wonder some things. Hey, uh, if I've got a, a field evaluated product, and somebody and it's listed and or it's labeled as field evaluated and then they move it to another location is that label still valid well no maybe not join tomorrow I'll answer that question along with a whole bunch more okay here's my contact info jeffrey.simpson at ul.com shoot me an email I will sign you up for tomorrow's uh, inspector meeting and starting at 6 p.m. Eastern and uh, who knows, maybe you'll win the Apple Watch or uh, a Home Depot gift card or two. Uh, next slide. Just my info. I'm here for you. Okay. We appreciate what you're doing out there. And uh, UL is always here to help you. Um, take my info down. Call me anytime. I represent the uh, UL in the uh, Northeast, uh, in the New England area. And uh, I'd love to come out and see you guys once this whole mess is over and uh, do a presentation at your place. And that's all I got, Tom. That's it, buddy. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all any right. Any questions? If there's any questions, please let me know, and uh, otherwise we'll just answer them tomorrow at the at the inspector's meeting. All right. Uh, no, I don't see any questions on the uh, – oh, that's top chat. i got to get rid of top chat. i got to put uh -oh. in live chat. Live. And I don't see any other questions there, uh, okay. Jeff. You did such a great job, buddy. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. You know, sometimes uh, you never know how things are going to turn out, especially when you're starving like I am, and I'm about to go eat right now. All right. Well, get that done, as was everybody else. Remember, at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, we're going to start grounding with uh, Paul Dabrowski and Joe Andre. Joe Andre. That's right. Okay, awesome. I'll tune in. I'll see you guys. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, everybody out there. Be good. Be safe. And uh, please, uh, if you, I'm, I'm working on the registration for everybody, so uh, I, I sent the email out already. I am going to, um, I am uh, just working through the, the the spreadsheet. And if you didn't get a email from me, please send me a note back at tdimitrovich at gmail.com. Take care. Uh, God bless. All that good stuff. So we'll see you guys and everybody at two o'clock. Adios. Is there a free drawing, Bill? Bill Shell says, I think uh, I think what um, Bill Shell, Bill, you will want, if you're an inspector, you can go to Jeff's uh, uh, UL meeting tomorrow night, and that's where he's giving out free gifts. We are. Uh, an, an iWatch, an uh, Apple iWatch, or what do you call it? Apple Watch, and a, uh, we got uh, some Home Depot gift cards to give well, out. I know where I'm going to be at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. There you go. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Take care. And I am going to uh, stop this uh, streaming. And we will see you in a little bit. So I'm out of here. Here I go. I'm getting up in my kite.